I just hope the game doesn't crash on you. Oh, God, <laughs> I'm expecting it. Do you want to check the bookshelves? <laughs> <laughs> I can cause it. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back to a new Let's Play. I'm Matt. I'm John. I'm Elliot. I was struggling for a pick this year at Halloween Fest. Rule of Rose kind of fell apart on me, so I decided to go with the easier way out and do Bloodstained <laughs> Ritual of the Night. <laughs> For PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, and most likely your toaster. Nah. Uh, it's 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 released for a lot of platforms at the, at the time of this uh, recording, and who knows, it might get ported to other things. So we'll have to wait and see. I hope it does. This uh, but uh, yeah, this is easily my game of the year for 2019. This is one I've been heavily anticipating for a long time, and I've experienced it in many ways. Uh, as a Kickstarter backer for this one, I had experience with the alpha. I played the beta demo. Uh, I was able to uh, sample the game in a couple of other ways, and the full product finally came out a couple of months ago, and I've had Ma the pleasure. Yes! <laughs> I finally had the pleasure of playing it fully uh, about a couple of weeks at the time of this recording. And, uh, ah, dongs. <laughs> <laughs> no, just plain old dongs. Just plain old dongs. Okay. Now, if you back the game at a certain level, you can also enter your backer ID, which I think uh, allows you to easily track your name in the credits. Not every If you just back the game, you don't immediately get into the credits. I think it's only for those that yeah. contribute at a certain tier. Because I was looking for my name. I'm a $60 con uh, backer for this game because I wanted the physical copy of the game. Yeah. Uh, and I think that wasn't enough to get my name in the credits. Because this sure. game, unlike Money Number 9, decides not to name every single person that contributes to the game. Thank including, you. Including the anonymous. It wouldn't be a problem if they also didn't credit the anonymous backers you know right. it's like it, it, you bloat out the list anonymous list. number one yeah anonymous number two basically uh but this well i mean if you haven't heard the story about those this is pretty much koji igarashi's uh, uh big ass fuck you to konami yeah. saying that the, uh, he was told that nobody wanted there's no use. market in metroidvanias anymore specifically for like castlevania or what have you and koji just like you're full of shit right and uh, i can prove you wrong and so one, for one, the Kickstarter is like one of the it's one of the highest grossing video game related Kickstarters ever con uh, made for in, in history. Right. Uh, and secondly, uh, it, you know, the game is that good. The game is great. Like it is fantastic. This is a Koji Igarashi Metrovania, thick and thin, with Ritual like, of the Symphony of the Night. But yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's basically another take on Symphony of the Night, which you can easily say that. Well, is, isn't that all the Igavanias, John? If we're, if we're being real here, you know, yes. Technically, Aria, Sorrow, Donna, Sorrow, Portrait of Ruin, uh, Order Harmony, of Ecclesia. Harmony of Dissonance. Most like shamelessly, I would say, is yeah. the biggest culprit of that. But even that game has its qualities, even if I do find it the weakest of the Igavanias. Mm -hmm. But they're all very fundamentally solid games. Absolutely. Some of my favorites of all time. And I'm very happy to say that Ritual of the Night is right up there with them. Oh, yeah. I would say, if I had to put them on a totem pole, even though it's not a Castlevania, it clearly is, I want to say right now it's... Symphony Night still edges over this game, but this is this is pretty much a fine-tuned Aria Sorrow. Right. And I love that about it. I love this game for everything about it. The characters are enticing. The world is mass. The world is immersive. Yeah. But the, um, and I get to the, kick the one thing about everywhere. Igarashi is the, the honestly the, the phrase the devil is in the details. Yes. It's something that holds true in all of his games and, and that he designs. And you know, much like Symphony of the Night, much like those games, there's a lot of details and nuance that you may not notice at first, but you'll see later. It's like, oh, I never really took notice of that until now. Right. You know, and it's like. It, it might be a big deal. It might be a small deal for uh, some folks, but it's like I, it, it does very much in making the world very fun to explore. It does. The only thing, the only complaint I have against the game is the crafting is way too much. But that's like yeah. the smallest complaint. Yeah, uh, I, I don't. I, I never get much out of the crafting in general, as we'll see it here, because this game, uh, much like the other game, still gives you potions and ethers and high ethers, and more often than not, those are more than enough than what you need. You can only carry a max of five high potions for some reason. I never got that limitation. Yeah, really, it's really weird. Um, you can carry nine regular potions, but you can only carry five high potions. The same goes for ethers. You can only carry five high ethers and nine regular ethers. So what does Curse of the Moon have to do with this? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, you do not need to play Curse of the Moon to play Ritual of the Night, because the two are in pretty Pretty much their own separate universes. You know, it's, it, do you like 8-bit games or do you like Metroidvanias? Pretty much. By the by, I got this uh, hour one when it came out, so I was per so I was privy to watching the text shit the bed and skip. <laughs> Patches well, that fixed that. It's kind of like, uh, oh wait, what do you mean? 
Uh, the, the game's been patched for quite a bit recently. No, no, but it, what it, in terms of how in the text? Oh, uh, you the words would just straight up drop. The words would not even match the dialogue, stuff like that. Oh, okay. No, I did not have to like here, like for example, if it says Sarah sure, and the hell he endured ten years ago, it'd be and the hell he endured ten years ago. Dirt, <laughs> dirt. <laughs> yeah. So we're playing this on the PS4, um, and for the most part, it's fantastic. A we're going to be taking yeah, a little buggy. We're going to be taking some caution uh, with the bookshelves because I, I mentioned in my video, but and you might have heard of it already if you've been following this game in any capacity. Uh, the game has this nasty habit of crashing right. when you check bookshelves. It doesn't happen all the time because uh, there were a number of bookshelves I have checked before the game crashed on me, like on my first playthrough. But it's like it made me so nervous. Paranoid. Yeah, it made me anxious. I see a bookshelf and I'm like. I gotta hope there's a save room close by because I want to check that bookshelf to learn about a secret technique, but I also don't want the game yeah, to see die. What I, mean? I wish I had the answer. Oh, wish... that's right. The, the text is just gone. Right. Oh, so it looks like it still does that. Okay, I guess it's still yeah. doing that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I never noticed that until now. Because here's the thing: these voice, these these cutscenes are fully voiced, and yeah, that's so great. Doesn't matter. And that, that's great. However, I tend to read faster than the voice acting is yeah. letting, so I skip ahead right. after I finish reading it. You should get ready. I have the chest there. And Elliot's here too. So, Elliot, uh, how's the? How, how, do you have any experiences with uh, Metroidvanias? I mean, we, we, I know we've asked this question before a million times, but like when we did Symphony of the Night and all that. Mm -hmm. But it's like, were you, uh, were you looking forward to this game at all? Was it not in your niche? I didn't or? really know much of the game, to be honest. Like, please stop kicking the lamps. Because like, <laughs> please stop kicking the lamps. Because like when. Uh, Curse of the Moon came up. I was like, okay, uh, a little confused. What happened to the other game, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I never really kept up with it, really. So I can use a knife or I can start kicking things, and God damn it, I love kicking things. All right. My first run was a martial arts run, or unless I absolutely had no choice, I was kicking the shit out of everything. So yeah, uh, Matt, you're, you're, you said uh, uh, behind the scenes that you're going for a martial arts run. Basically, you just could be yeah. using your feet. Magic Monk. Magic Monk. <laughs> there we go. I like that. Oh yeah, this scene, which I love in terms of the painfulness, but it's really hard to watch a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> now we just got our first red shard, which is a con which is a uh, conjuring shard. Basically, it's your magic attacks. Yeah, I believe uh, map to the triangle. Yep. Uh, in the I kind of like to space. imagine that every single time you get one of those shards, a teeny piece of it like becomes like a crystalline that goes into your heart. That's so exactly how it works. Yeah. That's right. why. That's why. In game, in game story, they warn her not to absorb too many shards because that's exactly what's happened. The the tattoo on her on her bosom, uh, that's actually not a tattoo. That's actually a curse. You right. know, she is a shard binder. And what shard, uh, shard binders are, are uh, they're humans that were uh, experimented, experimented on, by on by alchemists to become conduits to summon demons. Right. And the the consequence of that is that the more power you absorb, the worse that curse gets. So while it looks like a cute little rose tattoo at first, it will eventually cover her entire body and kill her. Huh. Uh, uh -uh. But it said in in lore, it said that if you absorb too many shards, you risk dying. You don't have to worry about that. In this game. Game, no. You can absorb as many shards as you want, and, and you need to in order, in order to power up your abilities. Right. You know, uh, for instance, uh, to use an example, Matt just got the Cerulean Splash, and uh, it's, it's a, a water bottle. It's basically a water bottle. It's not uh, a bad water bottle. Little water, water yeah, bottle. Still, I stay hydrated, bitch. <laughs> um, welcome to welcome to the Minerva Galleon. Like, and as is, it does a lot of damage. You know, it can actually uh, one or two shot most enemies in this ship. Right, that's uh, what I'm doing. But if you absorb more Cerulean Splash Shards, it will do more damage. Uh, it doesn't really do more damage so much as it does improve the projectile and properties of it. Are you thinking about the rank or the power? Uh, there's, I'm thinking there's, of there's the grade. There's, rank yeah, and there's, the grade. there's a rank and a grade. Right. Also, I want to show something off really good here. Absolutely top tier um, bestiary. You go right in here, you learn something about what it's supposed to be, and it gives you the drop items, the drop rates, and where you can find them either. Also, I fucking love that about this game. Yeah. So you're not really wa left wanting much. Left wanting, yeah. And in case you need to complete the bestiary, uh, I believe uh, Castlevania Portrait of Ruin uh, was the first to really deck out the bestiary because right. God knows I needed to get some rare drops and I needed to know, okay, who drops it? <laughs> and so this is our first instance of directional movement. You can use the right analog stick to uh, aim Mari Miriam. Uh, I was going to say Miriam's hand again. Miriam's hand. Miriam's hand. hand. <laughs> uh, I was going to say that again. Uh, you can use the right analog stick to, to guide Miriam's hand to either summon, uh, no, shoot directional shards, which, which we'll see later, uh, or you can use it to open up magical doors. You don't do the latter that much in this game. Uh, Wait, lemon. Say what? I got a lemon. Oh, you got a lemon? Nice. It's just falling on the floor right there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I believe those water monsters will keep spawning the more the longer you're down there, so yeah. it pays just to ignore them. Ah, fuck me. Oh, cool. I'm not the only one that does it. 
So those are called sea maws. They look like, I know, they look like octo penises. Hey, Light, we're going to use that for crafting later. Yeah, uh, so again, uh, play Curse of the Moon. This is pretty much the ship level, only it's the first uh, first level in this game. <laughs> Let's see what we got up here. And uh, in terms of what Miriam can do, Miriam uh, pretty much has pretty much the, the, the fine-tuned uh, Egovania controls you're used to. Yep. Uh, she also has a backdash. Score. And it, it is not a fast form movement in this game. Don't worry about that. This either. here is pretty much a claw, claw the Gale Crawler. That's going to be like a move you pretty much um rips across the floor. I got my first dress, so let's give that an equipment. Plain dress, that does what I needed to do. Thank you. There are a number of pieces that are real-time. They reflect on Miriam's model, and I love that about this game. There's one piece of body armor that if you get it, you can't customize her clothing for a while. But oh, yeah. it's also like the luck variant, so I'm going to be kind of using that. Yeah. It looks just fine on her anyway. So. I kind of wish the game kind of went all out with, the, with outfits, though. Right. Because, you know, um, headpieces and accessories reflect off Miriam's model, and I love that. Kind of wish dresses did that too. Right. Not every dress does that. Only a few dresses do it. Actually, the only dress I can think of is the luck dress. Uh, the Valkyrie dress does it too. Uh, in the in the tower area. You can go down there. I want to see what's over here. Oh, oh Jesus! Oh, Dull a hammer. We saw him near the end of Curse of the Moon. Right. It's not that big of a deal here. Again, Sir, uh, Sir and I got my helmet. So William Splash is really good this early in the game. Unfortunately, as Johnny said, it shows. Yeah. <laughs> See, you know, it's good um, it, It's good for, like, the, the stat boost and all that. But, you know, fashion-wise, it's kind of ugly. Yeah. You know, I, and I wish there was a way that you can disable the glamour while still keeping the stats. When your custom Glamour is the end game, Johnny. Yeah. When your custom character can show up in cutscenes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. A tunic. Yeah. Uh, okay. you're, 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 you're rolling that dice early, I see. Yeah, I, so too, like to live dangerously. That's what we're talking about. In the console versions of the game... Uh, the bookshelf Mac and check. They're all over the castle. They teach you different techniques and what have you. Save point. And uh, unfortunately, this game has a, ha a habit of crashing, potentially. I don't know what the percentage is, just based on like the certainty of it happening, but it can happen. So, if you see a bookshelf, if you're playing this game on PS4, until this gets patched out indefinitely, in if you see a bookshelf, look for a save room first before checking it, because you don't. this game doesn't autosave. Um, well, I don't think it does. I'll save anyway. No. Um, oh, by the by, um, you see the charger chest in this game? They yeah. can restock. Yes. I'm not sure about the wooden ones, but some of them do, which uh, is very no. helpful for only farming. The, only blue ones. The blue okay, ones the blue ones restock. Because yeah. yeah. they're, they're crafting materials. Which is great, in my opinion. I personally love that idea, so I can like know where I can go to try to get some quick crafting materials in the right. event that I'm going to be... Well, I am going to be farming up a bit more, because one mistake I had on my first run is I could not upgrade my footwear for the longest time. So for a very long portion of the game, I was just running around in toy shoes. Yeah. And that and got it, on my fucking nerves. Again, another thing about, you know, Metroidvania is uh, developed by Igarashi or otherwise is that you do want to check walls because... Uh, there's a lot of hidden shit. There's a lot of hidden shit. The walls can crumble. You also want to check floors. Sometimes right. floors and ceilings. But I usually... I don't... I, for one, have no... Oops, I have no problem, like, holding off on real exploration until I get the crawling eye. Right. Because uh, because you... you Generally, in this game, you're revisiting every area twice. Yeah. Uh, for different reasons. So if you want to hold off on the exploration, you're more than happy to do so. So far, uh, our luck is starting yeah. pretty good so far. So this is our first directional shard. This is mandatory. You, will, you, you will always get it. This is the flame cannon. And uh, in some instances, you need to use directional shards to activate certain things. But again, right. you don't do it often. Like This is, like I think, the one of only two times you use the cannon to, uh, yep. you know, to break a wall open. And that's about it. it uh, basically, a, a, a giant tutorial right. on just how to use the regular shards. The Morte are the only enemies in the game that won't be a shard for you. Really? Yeah, there's no more shards. They're just really common, I guess. So. Yep. I mean, it makes sense because Kinda like sugar. Because like if they're that if they're com that common of enemies in the game, oh, then uh, like uh, hit uh, and all. Yeah, there's a wall over there. Like if that if they're that common of enemies, then it's like it would kind of be pointless if you if they were given shots. MP max up, very nice. Yeah, uh, this game has uh, HP and MP max up, pretty much exactly what they say. The permanent upgrades they have in uh, magic. Uh, going back to what you were saying, Ali, the really common enemies shouldn't have them. Yeah. No, because zombies well, have them. Um, okay. And believe it or not, the ghoul had them, and um, the okay. ghoul and okay, uh, then the, the sorrow games ha had the ability to reverse the food qualities, and yeah. it was really fucking helpful with the uh, with, like, rested the tin can, which yeah. ended up being the full heal and the rotten meat. Okay, then I'll just rephrase it, like, um, more so, like, uh, less, like, less powerful enemies, I would say. Because, like, the Mortes are just regular mooks. They're mud mooks, yeah, you're right. So, that, that's kind of, that's kind of, that's, that's what I mean by the that. The Galleon map, gnarly. 
Yeah, you always have a real-time mini-map on the top right. Love that about this game. Uh, reminds me a lot of Metroid. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you can also get a full view of the map just by, I, I believe it's hitting the, uh, what was it? Uh, the touchpad. The, the touchpad touch 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 button. Yeah. I got a short sword. That's nice. Yeah, uh, this this uh, area, the ship itself, will give you access to pretty much all forms of uh, all base forms of the different weapon types you can use in this game. Uh, short knives, uh, kung fu kicks. That's a weapon. Uh, short knives. Uh, you'll get a claymore soon after. There's also the whip. Uh, there's a, a spear. Oh, I love the uh, unbuntwa. It's a little finicky to pull off though, right? Because you have to chain the the Hudoken motions in order. Right, which I don't. Which, honestly, and I'll level with you, I don't use a whole lot of techniques in the game. Neither do I. I didn't feel the need to them uh, for them because you already have more than enough offensive options. It's just something you want to do if you want to do it. Right. You know, And uh, honestly, uh, to use that example, it's a little awkward to pull Cotton off for, 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 sugar. For, meager, for meager payoff because the final kick of that combination, if Matt wants to show it off real quick, actually. There we go. The final hit of that one does a lot of damage, but there's a, there's a, there's a lot of buildup to it. A so, tattered scarf, which so, is ragged cloth, and somehow better than my regular scarf. Yeah. <laughs> so is Miriam French? Yeah. No, she's not. Uh, I thought uh, she was. No, she just puts on an accent when she does that. Huh. Oh, yeah, Miriam's kind of a chatty lady too. Well, the picture of actually, I don't know where Miriam hail from. Oops. I just know that the game is soon after the Industrial Revolution. Maybe she's from the dreaded land of. Pennsylvania. <gasps> <laughs> we will be back here for yeah, that. We, I can't we, reach we that yet. We can't reach that just yet. And it's taunting me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you can also see the to adjust on the, uh, the the mini map there. Ghosts, uh, resilient to my strikes, in the sense of you know I can't really do much to them, but yeah. they are they are pretty much like a, a sentient fireball for you if you get us. Yeah. If you know your uh, earlier Metroidvanias, there are uh, enemies can be weak to certain types of weapons as well. Not so much elements, but weapons. Mm. Uh, I believe uh, anything that does physical contact, like hiss, like fists or uh, right. kicks, is technically striking. Uh, anything with a weapon like sword or a knife is slashing. And uh, am I missing anything? Uh, I don't believe there's 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 striking, slashing, striking, uh, slashing, piercing. Yeah, piercing, which is like lances and all that. And um, Whipping? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's strike, slash, pierce, fire, ice, thunder, darkness, light, poison, and I don't know the I forget the other uh, two. The darkness? Darkness, I said that. Well, no, because um, darkness was after uh, lightning. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. They're, they're different things. Yeah. There are things that uh, enemies have different weaknesses to them. So it's good to pay Siege. attention to that sort of thing. Well, you make use of those a little bit later. Yeah. Yeah, you can't use them as is. You have to uh, give them to the dude in the village, the plant. Oh, nice. And it uh, takes a little bit to uh, make some rice. Iron. And, and here's the other shot. Again, when you're not using Special it to light shortcut. cannons to break walls down, directional shards are really good for airborne enemies as, too, uh, for, uh, as well. Airbone. <laughs> airbone. 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 And I believe that is another colossal wall on the right over there. Yeah, it is. Let's get rid of that squid enemy, though. Squidly. Beat it, dickheads. <laughs> yeah. Hey, money. A nice little payoff and more MP Max. I'm not going to take that. That's on one's base. <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> I'm not going to take that. That's on one's base. <laughs> My base now. I do believe this is a save room or it's a warp room. No, no, no. It's just chest, chest room. room. Now, anytime I see a room that's two blocks wide, I'm thinking it's either save or warp. Guns can work two different ways. If you, you can use them without the bullets, or you can use them with special bullets. They can make for a fun gameplay style, for, but I'm not going to be doing them. I did not use guns at all. I didn't until I got the ultimate gun. Uh, which one was that one? It's a dark. It's a gun that looks like a mix between a crossbow and a regular gun. Okay. I forget the name of it, but the shot's home. Oh, okay. Then it just gets what Yeah, that's one thing I absolutely love about this game too. When you get an ultimate weapon, they usually come with some real property to it, like the blue Izayoi, the uh, katana. Yeah. That gets more power depending on how many enemies you kill to a certain amount, to yeah. a certain extent. Oh, cool. It, it reminds me a lot of the Muramasa Blade, then, of Symphony of the Night. But that right. was about how much blood you absorb, though, not so much how many enemies you There's kill. There's a blood absorber mechanic in this game. I don't really use all that much my, myself. Uh, besides the one shard I can think of, I can't really think of what you're talking about. Yeah, that's another weapon. That There's an ultimate weapon in the game that actually counts how much uh, blood you absorb. Okay, the, the, that, that sounds like the Muramasa, at least the Muramasa called back. Tomatoes. Yeah, but you see, um, what Matt's uh, the the harpy enemies you're attacking. I mean, you can get up close to them if you can, 
use a Cerulean Splash, or you can use a Directional Shard if you want to. I like to hit the shit out of things really hard. But uh, like I said, I'm a pragmatist when I'm in the when I'm in the monk format fighting mode. Yeah. So it's like whatever works, you know. Yeah, that, that's the thing though. Oh, I was talking, I was telling Matt about this uh, before we started recording. But you know, this is uh, I think this is Matt's first ever Metroidvania for the channel. It is. Uh, and you know, what, especially with a game like Ritual of the Night, which gives you so many damn options to uh, take on enemies, I'm actually legitimately like, curious to how Matt approaches you know fighting enemies and all that sort of thing. You know, how will he tackle this boss? How will he tackle this enemy? I'm going to uh, kick the shit out yeah, of it really yeah, fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> Fascinating. I almost write this down. See? I kicked yeah. it. I, kicked. <laughs> I kicked that in the head repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that about this game, too. Like, the martial... I mean, honestly, the kicking... I don't even, like, do this kind of shit when it comes to um, regular Castlevania games, but some of the, the kicks are just satisfying. Well, I like that the, the the kick sound effect actually sounds like a kick sound effect and not like Symphony Night where everything's a punch. Right. <laughs> you know, which was funny, you know, to be fair, but it's like, it's also, you know, I'm hitting someone with my foot, but it sounds like a punch. <laughs> Damn. You're getting good RNG, though, with the drops. Yeah. Because you know, your Cerulean Splash, I I'm think, is lucky. already, uh, your Cerulean Splash is probably already grade four. I never knew the difference between that. I didn't bother with the grade. I was more interested in the rank. Then I worry about the grid if I have any left The rank over. is what... Uh, so later down the road, we're going to be... Uh, Johannes will be able to upgrade our, our shards. And uh, you use that by giving them crafting material. And uh, you increase the shard's rank, which uh, not sometimes sometimes doesn't just increase the power of the shard, but increases the area of effect. I wonder if I'll be able to make this. Uh, you cannot. Uh, I, uh, I you can see it right from here. It doesn't look like yeah. it. You oh, can, unless you do the triple kick uh, no. in air? Wait, I don't, I don't, wait I does that carry right. you in midair? That's what, that's what I'm guessing. I don't, we'll take well, a shot at that, actually. Yeah, yeah, I never we, thought to we try that. We can take a shot at that. I don't think it lets you defy gravity, though. I'll take a shot at it. I mean, it's feasible. Dickhead. <laughs> Yeah, I got these drops are really good. All right, so it's the triple. It's the it's triple open, right? yeah. Yeah, I don't think you can do it in midair. Yeah, I don't think I can. Damn. Um, we'll, we'll be back. Yeah, I mean, that's a boss door. Right. But uh, one door to make it loose. Yeah. We're gonna be back there. Yeah, we're, we have to come back here anyway. Yeah, no, but even then, it's like it's right there. Money, and, money, um, honey, honey. Normally, when there's boss rooms, there's usually a save room nearby. So uh, do go out of your way to uh, explore and uh, look out for it. Yeah, ironically enough, the first boss gives me the most shit with my, in my martial oh, arts Oh, really? Runs. Okay. Well, no, you have to really splash those. Really splash does a lot of damage. Thanks, Seton. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but uh, before we go in there, should we call it a part? Okay. Yeah, we have been playing for a little bit. Kind of just got lost in it, <laughs> you know, which is bound to happen. But okay, we'll see you guys next time with more Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Ha <laughs> ha!